Welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we have Brother Gio, Brother Javier, and Brother Josh. We'll be diving into John chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by Brother Javier, and then we'll get straight into the word for today. Gracious Father, how much we adore you. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for bringing us through another week. And we thank you, God, that Another Saturday morning, we can gather here on Zoom to study your word. And I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And I thank you for the faithfulness of my brothers and the commitment that we have made. Our God, as I pray, as we open our Bibles, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you open up our ears and our hearts and our minds so that we may receive what it is that you have for us to receive. Speak to us through your word this morning. Now, may we not only see you, but maybe see ourselves and bring ourselves in line with your word. So have your way, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Now we're getting into the word for today. John chapter 16, verse 1 says, I've told you these things so that you don't abandon your faith, for you will be expelled from the synagogue, and the time is coming when those who kill you think they are doing a holy service for God. This is because you have never known the Father or me. Yes, I'm telling you these things now so that when they happen, you'll remember my warning. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you um, with you for a little long. I'm going to let that settle, settle in everybody's head. Once it's once it settled, uh, let's uh, share our interpretation of the scripture. I think verses two and three really hit a great point. Um, historically speaking, like we can look at things like uh, the Crusades or, you know, even slavery within America, right? How the name of the Lord was used to keep an entire people bound or even manifest destiny, like a westward expansion, that kind of stuff. And how throughout history, people have done horrible acts, committed horrible things and have claimed to be doing it in the name of the Lord. Um, and that's what the scripture kind of reminded me of, but it's saying that they've never known the father. And I think that's, that's a lot of the people who have been hurt by people in the church. Um, so like this whole church hurt thing that, you know, people may have been offended or, you know, they had a negative experience or who, you know, this scripture can be applied there as well. You know, when you're maybe not literally killing the person, but verbally killing them, that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's just important to remember to do these things in the right way. Um, but yeah, I really like verse two and three, so. As. Yes, sir. What's your take? Similar to what Jai said, uh, I'm learning more about history uh, now in school, like with slavery, slave trade, the Jim Crow era and stuff like that. And one thing that I've noticed, like what Jai said, that people try to use God to justify not only those things, but a bunch of other things that they've done in S3 that have nothing to do with God and align with God's word. And I kind of, I, I just get a little irritated that people try to use God to back things up like that when God is not for that or um, supports all of that. But um, in verse one, I like the fact that Jesus says that don't abandon your faith because uh, faith is so amazing and especially on this journey with God if you're banning your faith uh, with God you're just going to be so lost and this journey is just going to be a very hard journey for you and it, it's, it's just going to be difficult so you gotta, you gotta always keep your faith question for you you two um, at the end of verse 4 he says I didn't tell you earlier um, one, who is, who, who is Jesus talking about? Who, who, who is he talking to? His disciples. So why didn't he tell them all of this earlier? I know it says, because I was going to be with you longer. But that's not just it. There's, another, there's other reasons why he didn't tell them earlier that these things would happen. Why do you think that is? I would say because it was a time and place for everything. Jesus couldn't fully come out at the beginning when he missed his disciples and tell them, I'm going to die on the cross and I'm going to go to heaven. It was a time and place for everything. And he was slowly 
like rolling in information? Um, I'm honestly not quite sure. It says, I'm telling you these things now, so let me have the other one. Why didn't Jesus tell his disciples about, you know, the persecution they would face after? I'm not quite sure. I, I would say that because they were somewhat, I don't even know if protected is the word. This was there with him because obviously he went through things. So, gonna sound up. so I really, I'm not quite sure. Okay. So think about, let's say, uh, the four of us started church, right? And Gio and I are your, your senior pastors or something like that. And we tell you from the jump, you're going to go through it. People are going to try to kill you and throw you out wherever we send you to preach. Uh, what would you be your response to that? Just starting out. Fearful. Be fearful or scared. You would probably, yeah. probably yeah. like, yo, I'm good. Right? Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got that. I got that. I, um, I, I mean, I see that point too. Um, I was also going to say that they, they probably wasn't mature enough to receive any information. Because I feel like if, if they would have um, been told those information earlier, some of them probably would have left. Yeah, and abandoned their faith, right? They, so the time that they spent with Jesus right, um, was a time of learning, but it was also a time of preparation, right, because eventually he would leave them, right, but even that he didn't tell them from the jump, right, that I'm going to leave you eventually, he didn't really tell them that from the onset, right, um, he waited a little bit because I needed to prepare them for this to happen, right, so their faith had to be strengthened, uh, they had to become knowledgeable of the gospel and his word, all right. Um, so, so, you got a good, 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 uh, good answer. Here's the way. I want to see what Gio's about to say because Gio sounds like he got some type of Jesus coming down to him knowledge on his mind. I, like, I want to hit. God is good all the time. And all amen, the time, amen. God is good. <laughs> preach, preach. Amen, <laughs> amen. <laughs> that, that's what I got. No, nah, you, you stopped at which verse? That was verse four. You stopped at verse four. Uh, four. Um, I guess it's just like a word of encouragement, actually. Um, I went back to verse 20 in chapter 15, and he says, Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And go back to verse 19. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. I know a lot of times um, we have some sold out teenagers <clears throat> in church or when they're with the Christians from the church. But then when they go amongst their friends in school or even their family members, they kind of try to blend in instead of standing out, being separated. Um, so I think that for those who are listening to this, I think that's a word of encouragement that Jesus is clearly telling us that should we decide to choose Christ and come up out of the world, there would be there will be suffering and persecution. I don't know if we preach that in the church these days to our youth, to even the adults, to anybody in the congregation that when you choose Christ, prepare to suffer. Everybody thinks that when you choose Christ, this world that we're living in will be flowing with milk and honey and there will be all types of melodious birds chirping and everything will just be peaceful once you choose Christ. But it's not the environment that we live in that brings us the peace. It's actually the Christ that lives in us that brings us the peace. Um, and we have to keep that regardless of the environment that we're in, we have to bring peace into the environment because we have the peace of Christ living in us. So I think that's just a word of encouragement. And to me, I'm just imagining this whole setup 
you know, Jesus comes, he sits everybody down. He's like, all right, let me talk to you real quick. I got, I got to chop it up with you. Listen, it's getting ready to go down. I know you've been rocking with me for the past, say, three years or so, but things are about to switch up. Hey, what? What are you talking about? They're going to try to come for your head now. They, who, what, when, why? They're going to try to kill you for my sake because you choose me. These people who don't know me know my father. They're going to kill you. But be encouraged because I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hold up. You mean tell me they're going to try to kill me and you're telling me that that's okay. I'm supposed to be okay with that. How do you even stomach that? Like, how do you comprehend that? So that, that's what I'm just like, I'm still trying to like, because we, we don't necessarily re- experience that now. We live in the quote unquote land of the free America. I don't know. That's just me. I'm just thinking. That's why I didn't say much. I see where you're coming from. I, and I understand it. And by Jarvis and uh, Josh had not, they understand it too. Right, but think about now. Yeah, we don't have like the same culture right now, but do we as churchgoers put people out of the church and think that we're doing a God service? I've seen that before. What do you mean Um, put them out of the church? Okay, so somebody comes in Let's say it's a female and a male, they're coming together. The male's pants are sagging and he looks dirty. And the female, her dress is a little bit too high above her knees for the church's liking. Do we seek to kill them? Not physically, but spiritually. Do we seek to judge them and put them out of the church and think that we're doing a God service? Oh, you can't come in here. And I say they've been coming for like a month or so. And we're like, yo, sis got to go or, you know, you got to change how you are. Like, you you can't come in here as you are. We're not going to accept that. Like, I, I, just, I just feel like, I think I think I read in a study that it's not our job to judge people. But it's our job to lead them to Christ. These people were so caught up in the law that they thought anything outside of the law meant that you had to be killed because you can't go around spreading anything contrary to the law. And so we think sometimes these Christians in our churches, they think that we're so, like at times we feel like we're holier than thou. And we don't receive people with open arms and with a loving heart. But instead we seek to kill them and thinking that we're doing God's service by judging them. I love when people are preaching and you got people in the congregation, yeah, oh yeah. And then it's like the the word is um, you know, you need to watch how you talk to people. Oh, you you got you got your sister next to you is smiling in your face and loving on you. And then when you turn around, she's talking about you, and then you got everybody, yeah, oh yeah. And it's just like, is anybody taking the time to see if the if that word is for you? Are we killing people and thinking that we're doing God's service? And by killing them, by judging them. You know what I mean? People like come to me and be like, oh, Gio, I'm done. I can't go to church no more, bro. I'm tired of them saying things to me, judging me, talking about me. Like, it's just, and I'm saying to them, I'm just like, I, what can I say? Keep pushing, sis. Keep pushing, sis. You would expect something like that from outside the church. But the, the very place where you're supposed to come and be sharpened and empowered, people are killing. I got an example for you. Uh, I read one time that there was a the old pastor had left the church and there was an announcement that a new pastor would be starting on this particular Sunday. And so he, he didn't come in like a normal pastor would, you know, sitting at the front, got three piece on, ready to go, ready to greet everyone and be nice and everything came in completely different. A man threw on the most dirtiest clothes ever, Looked real bummy, didn't shave, looked real rough. He came into church in the middle of it 
and he sat down in the back. And no one spoke to him. No one said anything. I think it even said that people moved away from him as he sat down in the seat. And so they go on to announce, all right, we're now going to bring our new pastor who's going to be taking over now. And we want everybody to stand. And when they call the new pastor, this guy gets up. And everybody, when he made it to the front, everybody looked at him like, everybody looked at him like he was a ghost. It was like, oh, snap. And he goes on to say, when I came in, no one showed compassion. When I came in, no one spoke to me. No one said anything. No one showed love. Everybody judged me and went the opposite way of me. We got work to do, church. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm relating verse 2 to. And it's so crazy you say what you said, as wrong because the Bible tells us that we ought to come to each other with our confessions and pray for one another. But the enemy has us to feel that we can't tell anybody our business. We ought to keep it a secret. And the next thing you know, we find ourselves in this ditch and this hole and we can't get out because we dug it so far deep. But we should have a brother or a sister in Christ that we can confide in and trust in. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah, but it's it's very sad that like people people who kind of um go through stuff like that. Me, I'm not a judgmental person. I know I know my past and the things I've done, so I don't I don't got a right to, to judge nobody. <laughs> I don't have the right to judge nobody based on my history. So I, I, I try my best to not be judgmental. Um, I'll talk to anybody in the church or pro anybody in the church, whatever, how you look, how you smell. That ain't going to business to me because God tells us to come the way you are. He ain't say come shaped up with, with, a, with, uh, with a brazen, a shape up, a brand new hoodie on, some, some J's on. Nah, he said, come the way you are. If your clothes are dirty, your pants sagging, you don't have no type of money on you, whatever the case or circumstance you in, come. I mean, as a church, we got to be accepting of those people. It's a lot of changes and a lot of work that got to be done in the church. And by the grace of God and the people in power, we're able to get those work done and change the things that are needed to be changed. Amen. Yeah. I think we got to reach before we teach. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. People always say Jesus is the answer, but nobody take the time to find out what the person's question is. Like, what the person going through? <laughs> Get to know me. Talk to me. Find out what I'm going through. Yeah. All right. You're free to move on now. Sorry. No, you can. I'm, I'm glad you put up that point because uh, I wasn't even thinking about that. See, iron sharpening iron. <laughs> I was not even thinking about that. Hey, thanks, thanks for that, G. Thanks. Now, guys, we're moving on to verses five. Verse five says, "But now I'm going. But now I'm going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him. And when he comes, he will con con." Convict the world of its sin, and of the righteous, uh, and of God's righteousness, and of the judgment, and of the coming judgment. Verse nine: The world sin that is refused to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. What did you just read, Ezra? A whole lot of stuff. You're not allowed to read anymore, okay? Somebody else. I'm because I'm picking up what you're putting down, brother. <laughs> you are I'm reading it and then passing it off to people, and you don't even know what you're reading. <laughs> no, I'm the reason why I'm reading it and passing it <laughs> on, so I can, so I can really um just settle in my mind what oh, I just yeah. read. Yeah, and Joshua goes and we will ask you what you think. Be like, yeah, pretty much what. Yeah, Joshua. what Joshua was saying, what he said. Yeah, pretty much what he said. <laughs> Not reading no more, bro. We caught on. All right, enough is enough. 
it, like you guys mentioned earlier that Jesus was needed to leave in order for the Holy Spirit to come. And we know we had the conversation, but, but why did Jesus need to leave? Uh, Bro, who was the Holy I don't really, Spirit? Who's the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Who is he? The advocate the that's Spirit. referred to in the scripture. Like, yeah. What does that mean? The this man that question. God is going to send. You said the what? The person that God is going to send. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm going to switch it. Uh, so who is the Holy Spirit, right? In, in what the scripture is saying, if I'm reading it correctly, the Holy Spirit is the advocate, or I believe another version says the comforter, um, but the one that Jesus is referring to in the scripture. Is that right so far? I was going to say the Holy Spirit is a part of God. I still don't understand the Holy Trinity. God, I give up. <laughs> I give up. I give up. <laughs> I give up. Boy, we just started. How you give it up already? I give pull up. The answer out. Is, is... Can you ask the question one more time? So you, you guys said the Holy Spirit. Um, I asked who is who is he? You guys said the advocate or the comforter. Mm -hmm. Is that who he is or just another way of referring to him? You know, another you know, way. People have pet names. Is that another name for you or is that who you are? No, I'll say it's another name. Okay. So, so let, let's talk. Let, 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 tell, me, tell me what you think. Tell us what you think. Who do you think this person or this thing or the it that they're referring to is? Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> this just another owl over here. So I want to play the mom go, my mommy. <laughs> um, 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 um I, I think it's the Holy Spirit because at this time, in my opinion, the Holy Spirit wasn't there yet. And Jesus needs to send the Holy Spirit to be able to guide and give um, his people wisdom. Because that was that's what Jesus was doing there. He was guiding them and giving them wisdom. Because Jesus can't be there physically, he got to send a spiritual form which is the Holy Spirit to be able to speak to his people. And Jesus, who is the head person, he's going to speak through the Holy Spirit to speak to us. But you said the Spirit wasn't there. That's what I'm thinking. That's why I say, from my opinion, he wasn't there. I don't know if he was there. You read in John me. 14 that the Spirit was there. That the Spirit was there. It says, Jesus told the disciples, mm -hmm. you know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you. So the spirit of God was with the disciples, but he, the spirit, was going to be with them and in them in a new way. So he was with them, but now he's going to be in them. <clears throat> There's levels to it, though. So do you see how that's kind of confusing, if that's the because yeah, in here in verse seven it says, "But in fact, it is best for you that I go that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come." If I do go away, then I will send him to you. So why is Jesus leaving if the spirit is already here? That's the same question Gio asked <laughs> earlier. And I, really? I have that same question too. Um, why couldn't the spirit and Jesus be... Like, why couldn't the spirit be in us and Jesus walk on the earth together? But... um. I mean, I sort of kind of came to an answer. I'm not quite letting it, uh, allowing it to be the answer. I'm kind of fighting it. But first off, Jesus had to go because someone had to be the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, right? He had to leave. Like, he had to be killed. Uh, without it, then, you know, we technically would still all be guilty of sin and would have to pay the penalty, right? Because some blood has to be shed once sin happens. And his blood was the ultimate blood. But my question was, okay, you, you were crucified. 
you only showed yourself to those who believe when you came back. And then you left, you told them to wait, and then the spirit would come and be in us. And then we will be empowered to go out and share your gospel. But why didn't you come back when the spirit came back? Like, why can't y'all just be here on the earth together? Like, I want to be able to give you a high five. You know what I mean? I want to have like a special handshake with Jesus. It's good, boy. You know, like, <laughs> I want to be able to do that. <laughs> I want to be able to do that with Jesus. But, you know, that was my question. But I figured out why he had to go. I get that part. My question is why he didn't come back when the spirit came back. No, I was saying I'm still stuck on Javay's in this question, who is the Holy Spirit, right? Because then, you know, we said advocate in, and then we went into the whole name thing. Um, so, yeah, bro, I'm not sure how to answer that. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit, right? He is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comforts us, and the Holy Spirit advocates for us. So that's, I guess... That's why they kind of use the names interchangeably, like the advocate, the comforter. Um, I know John 14 specifically does say he, the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, that's like literally all I have. So go, go ahead, Bishop. Hold on, before you go, why well, I feel like this is an easy answer, but I'm just not getting it. I really feel like this is an easy answer, but I'm just not comprehending it. Bro, because they always yeah, ask these questions that seem so simple, and it's like you got the most complex yeah. answer. They be nah, like, you know, like, is, yo. we we want y'all to forget this stuff because what we're doing, no one necessarily did with us, right? Um, I have mentors, but no one, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, really sat me down and explained who. He is thoroughly um, to me, right? Um, for a long time, when I was y'all age, and not I hate saying that like I'm mad older than y'all, but when I was a teenager, right? Um, it, the way it was, it was shown or displayed was that the Holy Spirit was almost reserved for certain people or reserved for pastors or preachers. Old people. Older people, yeah, um, and it only seemed as if uh, the Holy Spirit came to make them act crazy, like you know, when they get up in church, start bugging out, speaking in tongues, running up and down, falling on the floor. I would never want to be in church because I, I don't want to see that, right? Especially when my mother she be bugging. Oh, I'm out, back in time. You know what I mean? I <laughs> so uh, we want y'all to have uh, that foundational knowledge of the Holy Spirit, right? So. G, I'll start and then, you know, chime in, piggyback, and hopefully we lay a good foundation of understanding for y'all, right? So let's start with this. A lot of, pre lot of times people re refer to the Holy Spirit as an it, right? Holy Spirit is actually a person. He has a personality, right? So he's a person. Right? It's a he, right? Second thing, uh, we speak about um, the triune God. Right? So we have the Father, the Son, and as you know, we have the Holy Spirit. Right? Okay. So of the three, um, all three of them are God. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But they have uh, different personalities in that they serve a distinct role when it comes or as it pertains to the life of a believer. Same God, right? But they just serve um, a different role, right? Now, the Holy Spirit is easiest way, one of the easiest ways to understand is Jesus in spirit form. So it's the spirit of Christ living inside of us. Okay, so far, uh, as makes sense? Right. So, um, G, pick up. Lost my train of thought. So, I'll, I'll go to the scripture, right? So, he says that, he says, I tell you the truth, that it is expedient. Oh, no. I forgot we get in NLT, right? NLT says 7-7, right? 
Uh, he says, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. So Gervais said that the Holy Spirit has a personality. What what does an advocate do? What is an advocate? What does it mean to advocate or, or comfort? Let's start with that. It might be an easier word for you. Comfort. The comforter, as the King James Version said. Advocate is more like somebody that's speaking on the behalf of you. Uh, it gets sending a um, message to them. Um, comfort, that's somebody that's um, helping you and guiding you through either tough situation or just any type of situation that you're going through, whether good or bad. Okay. <clears throat> so what, what, what do we need the Holy Spirit to advocate for us? He's speaking on behalf of us, or is he speaking on behalf of Jesus? He's speaking on behalf of Jesus because the scripture said that that Jesus is going to send his message through the advocate, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay. And how is he comforting us? Is he comforting us or is he comforting Jesus? Us. Okay, good. So far, so good. So these are the characteristics. This, this, this is how you have the hard evidence that the Holy Spirit is a person. And it, which is usually referred to as an inanimate object, like something that has no life, you can't refer to something that can comfort, something that can speak, something that can be alongside of you and now live inside of you and cause you to operate in a certain way. It can, cons it, right? The Holy Spirit can consume you and cause a change in you. I could grab your hand, I can pull you in a direction. There's nothing you can do about it. The Holy Spirit can do the same thing as long as you allow him to grab your hand. He won't be as aggressive as I will be, right? He wants you to receive him with joy and with love, with open arms, so that he can comfort you, so that as he's advocating, you can hear him. That goes, to the, that goes for the characteristics and the person trait of the Holy Spirit. But now we talk about the difference of him being with us and now in us. What do you think the difference is? I don't know what teachers be feeling like. Yeah, right. That's a question. They look the other like, way. Um, <laughs> especially <laughs> online. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> if you look it all the way up, they're like, where the answers at? <laughs> like, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to find, like, with us, but not in us. I, I'm gonna use an example. Um, you, a you leader to a you. Um, you leaders obviously have that role where you're teaching the youth, you're preaching to the youth. I, you're preaching to the youth. I'll say that's you're with the youth, but in the youth is where you go and actually have a conversation with that youth, get to know that youth, learn their experience, give them guidance. Where it's not like you just preaching to everybody or you talking to everybody, but you getting personal with that person so you can learn more about them, so you can help them grow. So I don't know. I don't know. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. So when the Holy Spirit was with them, the Holy Spirit enabled them to come to Christ. The Holy Spirit enabled them to have faith in Christ and to hear what, hope, what Jesus was saying. Likewise, the same thing with us, right? He's the one that calls us and brings us to the altar to give ourselves away to Jesus. But something different happens when he's inside of you, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Notice how it said when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came descending upon Christ resided in him and it said the measure of the holy spirit's power in him was like you couldn't measure it. it's unmeasurable and it was it was at that moment as soon as the holy spirit descended upon him what was the first thing that happened he went to the wilderness got tested see if he was covid positive or not i'm playing i'm playing I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> He went, he went to the wilderness and was tested or tempted, right? By by the by the uh, by 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 the enemy, right? By the devil. 
And so that's the same thing Christ is getting ready to do. He's getting ready to send out the spirit to those who believe for a purpose. So it is our job to continue to allow ourselves to become available for the Holy Spirit to work in us and through us. But the Holy Spirit also has another job. In verse 8, he says, he will come to convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. I'm almost certain that when anybody does something wrong, they know it's wrong. You have to know wrong from right. Now, whether or not they stop doing it, that's on them. That's their choice. But that's the Holy Spirit convicting them of their sin. This, these are the jobs of the Holy Spirit. And I think Jay and I used to think that, which is probably still true. I mean, it is true. We should think that Jesus had to go because he was one man and he couldn't reach the world. But the spirit, because it's in the spirit form, he can reach multiple people. He lives inside of us. And as we go and interact with other people and so forth and so on, it becomes like a wildfire and we're just sharing the word and everything. And so it was like, we thought that was the reason why the Holy Spirit had to come. But Jay and I are on this journey to learn more about the Holy Spirit and more about who he is, what his purpose is, how he is related to us and every and anything that we possibly can, right? But right here, it says his goal, his job is to convict the world of sin, convict them of God's righteousness and convict them of the coming of judgment and the coming judgment. So we can't give you everything right now because of time, but for now, let's just know that the Holy Spirit is a person. He has a job and he's working in us to bring us closer to Christ and to ultimately empower us to go out and share the gospel. Yeah, I think we need to dedicate like a, an entire study in itself there's still learn more of the Holy Spirit. So he has multiple functions, right? Different roles. Uh, my question, next question, then we can move on. Do you have the Holy Spirit? I remember you, I remember you asking this at the um, youth retreat that I went to up by Ellenville. And I remember I had the same reaction to the question then. I was like, I look up. Okay. <laughs> I like, look up. <laughs> yet again another question that sounds so simple but i always get confused so in how do i i have the thought i'm trying to properly convey it. i i get confused with questions like these right because i always think like within church, my church experience growing up, um, when I would hear of the Holy Spirit, it's, I would hear like the Holy Spirit's here. So this is happening, right? Or um, in that kind of sense, like the Holy Spirit's here. So people are like speaking in tongues or the Holy Spirit's here. So, you know, healing and deliverance is taking place at the altar, that kind of stuff, right? And I remember specifically reading one scripture. Um, actually, no, I was doing a study with someone and it was talking about like how those things of the spirit are evidence of the Holy Spirit. I believe, I don't know the specific scripture, but it says something along the lines of um, that being evidence of the spirit. Um, so my question is, if you are not, I won't say being used in that way, but if that is not something that you are personally experiencing, then can you be filled with the Holy Spirit? So I guess I have a question for your question. Yeah, I was going to say that was a good way to get out of the answer in the question. I <laughs> know <laughs> uh, I'm so serious. I really don't know the answer to the question, but I have a question to answer the question. So I'm, I'm gonna definitely yeah, try that. Your turn. I'm gonna definitely try that, but I do. I definitely have the Holy Spirit in me. Um, I have the Holy Spirit in me. Yes, yes, I do. He 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 works in me each and every single day. Okay. I don't know. So. So it sounds like you're saying yes, but you don't know why you have the Holy Spirit, right? No. And, and I want y'all to know, and, and I'm not talking about Cone God or, or any particular church. Um, 
witnessing people jump around and speak in tongues is not evidence of them being filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? Don't, don't let that fool you. Some people just put on a, a show. Right? That's to the side. Um, here's a plain, straightforward answer. The moment of your salvation, the moment you accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you have the Holy Spirit. All of us have the Holy Spirit. Right? Now, when we start talking about spiritual gifts, speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues, prophesying, talking about different, I remember in the beginning, Gio said there's levels to it. So it's, it's levels to it, right? So the other question would be, do you have the infilling of the Holy Spirit, which is a little different, right? And I know in our churches, we refer, we go back to it, the Holy Ghost, right? Do you have the Holy Ghost, right? Which is different. There's a difference between, I know when we read NLT, and a lot of these other different translations, it doesn't refer uh, to him as the Holy Ghost, just the Holy Spirit, right? But there's a difference, right? So when we accept Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, we have the Holy Spirit. We all have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, right? Now, I'm sure you've heard terms such as um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the filling of the Holy Spirit. The next step or the next level that we should yearn to go or get to is the filling of the Holy Spirit, right? Which is a different level, right? Which we'll discuss another time, right? I just want to lay us to lay that foundational understanding. We all have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, all right? Oh, uh, no, I was um, it, it kind of, it was about the spiritual gifts because I, I wanted to put a marker in it so that I could read it later. You had, when you said it, it just made me think to go to it. Um, but no, that definitely makes sense. Um, like I said, that was definitely my understanding of the Holy Spirit and what it meant to be, what it meant to have the Holy Spirit. Like kind of what, what you said, um, what you guys said earlier, how like when you were younger, you used to think that the Holy Spirit was reserved for a certain people um, in the body of Christ. That's how I, how I used to look at it. So I know that we as Christians, um, you know, once we accept the Lord as our personal Savior, once we accept him into our heart and all that great stuff, um, we yes, we do have the Holy Spirit living in us. But I definitely I'm down to do another study um, on this specifically, because like you just named like two or other three other things that kind of tie into it. So I definitely do see that there's a lot of levels to this. As you said, there's a filling, there's an infilling, a dwelling, a indwelling and outdwelling. And I'm like, OK, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're we, we going to do the best we can to, to share what we're learning with you guys because we have to change the narrative and, and the understanding that's out there, especially for y'all, the young people, and for us as we're going forward, right? If not, we'll just keep on passing on what's been passed down from the older people. And when sometimes we read it and we look at it, it's not entirely true or it's not biblical or, you know? So we just want to make sure we're, we're going on the right path in our understanding of um, scripture. And I thank, I thank y'all for educating me and Josh. This is more of what we need. Like so many people that slow us, so many youth that don't have the knowledge that we need to have. The church, we need to have more of this instead of the passages um, preaching all the time to the congregation. Let's do in-depth preaching where we're working hands-on with people, teaching people uh, about saying stuff, especially the youth. The older um, people in the older people in church too, but especially the youth, since we're coming to lead the next generation. And just thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Phil and Jeffy. Thank you. Thank you for the continuously pouring into me and uh, Josh. We left. Oh, yeah, we're on 12. Okay. Now, guys, we'll be diving into the last few verses, verses 12 through 15. Verses 12 says, There's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will he will tell you about the future. He will bring glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives 
from me. So, I, I have a question. I go, I go. Sure. Oh, I was going to say, you wasn't supposed to read that, right? I forgot. Exactly. <laughs> you see how quick you picked up that? <laughs> <laughs> um, just for clarification. Go ahead, so, we, one version says advocate, another says comforter. I'm pretty sure another says encourager. And then here there's like another term, spirit of truth, right? So just for clarification, all of these are talking about the Holy Spirit, right? It's the same Holy Spirit, but just different names used to refer to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, he. Um, okay. I think the best way to get it is uh, look up those words in Greek which is how the New Testament was written. The language it was written in was written in Greek. And when you translate from Greek to English, a lot of the words lose their value. They lose their true meaning. And we just try to paraphrase it for us to understand in our language. Um, I believe, Jave, if you correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the word is paraclete. Yes. Paracletos or something like that. And it, um, it means to come alongside it means to be with. Um, and this is what was the, the goal, the mission of the Holy Spirit. And he's being here, he's being called here the spirit of truth because Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life, right? So everything truthful, the Holy Spirit will come and share with us. So if you have any questions about your faith, about what the Bible says, who can you go to to get the truth? Question. Gio, we could go to Gio. Gio and Jave. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> uh, listen, we are not the Holy Spirit. We are not the Spirit of Truth. <laughs> but that's what you can go to the Holy Spirit, right? It says He will show you. He will be the Spirit of Truth. He will guide you into all truth. Hence, so so when you learn about things like this, like this, should change your prayers as well. I don't know if you ever, the next time you get a chance, listen to how Bishop Jakes starts his prayer before he speaks. He says, spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Right? That he's asking the Holy Spirit to be there and to do what he came to do. Teach and guide us into all truth. Any questions you have, go to the Holy Spirit. Ask him to tell you the truth guide you into the truth because everything he's going to tell you guess where it's coming from jesus because he's the advocate for jesus and you just said that in the scripture that wasn't even in a guess good job mm -hmm. man good you get a star i'm gonna start <laughs> <laughs> exactly what it is right so and he will not speak of himself but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. Holy Spirit got a lot of things to do. But he's equipped to do it. The question is, are we positioning ourselves to receive all that he's willing to show us? I'm getting there. I'm getting there to position my, my, for myself. I, I'm not fully, fully there yet. What does that mean? But... What that mean? Yeah. I'm getting there. I, I don't think that you um, would be on the Zoom call if you weren't getting there. Like we're all getting there. No one ever gets there. Like it's a lifelong commitment, brother. Mm -hmm. There's still some truth that Javier and I don't know about. We we don't even know that it exists. So I Paul, so I Paul says, not that I have already um, reached perfection. Right, but I press um, towards the mark. So we all are pressing. The heck, man? We're all trying to get there. Um, that's wrong. But go ahead. I just, I just continue pressing each and every single day. Try to not let myself get in the get in the way. Um, but earlier I was mentioning that uh, the Holy Spirit would be speaking from um. God, I mean, I'm from God, from Jesus, because Holy Spirit is an advocate, and Jesus will continually speak through him so that we will be able to hear 
his word, but it's also up to us to hear his word because the Holy Spirit can do his job. Jesus can do his job. But if we don't open our ears to be able to really understand what information is getting to us, be able to meditate on that information, be able to execute that information in the correct way, it's going to be uh, useless of the job if we don't um, put it in effect. It's like, it's like, like Gio and Jazzy, y'all, y'all continuously teach us and educate us, but if we don't use it, um, the knowledge that y'all give us, it's useless. And we always got to remember that uh, the knowledge that Jesus gives us, the knowledge that we get from the Holy Spirit is not useless. It's going to benefit us in some type of way. So we have to um, be careful that we don't. Do you think you hear the Holy Spirit's voice? Do you hear his voice? That's for you, Josh, and you, uh, Ezra. Do I think that I hear the Holy Spirit's voice? Um, it's actually funny because I asked I asked Jive a question along these lines a couple of days ago. Um, I'm when it comes to like hearing the voice, I I'm kind of iffy on that. Like, I'm sorry, I'm trying to word this properly. It's it's never anything audible. Like it's not it's not like how you're speaking to me right now. I don't hear a voice in my head. Like for example, if I'm preparing a message, right? I always pray and I ask the Lord what He wants me to speak on. So when it comes to him giving me what I'm to speak on, it's always like I end up getting to that scripture or I, I know it's a popular thing, like I feel it in my heart, like this is what I'm supposed to be speaking on. But I don't, when it comes to like hearing God or hearing from the Holy Spirit, I don't know if anybody else does, but I don't hear a legitimate voice, if that makes sense. Okay. I didn't forget, bro. Um, no, bro, yeah, take your time. I, yeah, I didn't forget. Take your time. Um, as Ron, oh, yeah, I hear it. I, I definitely hear, it, but it's more like a small voice for me, like, not like a loud thing, like, yeah, that's what I want you to say. <laughs> but I, I, I hear it, I, I, I definitely hear it, and I was able to learn that I hear it because, see, I've always been hearing it, but I didn't recognize it because sometimes when you haven't. Sometimes when a voice is new to you, you may not recognize it immediately. But um, as it as it takes time, you're able to recognize that voice, and that's how I was able to do. I was able to recognize that voice, like um, brother, uh, Josh say when I pray, tell the guy what to say. It comes. It, I hear that voice in my head. Okay, talk about this. I want you to hit this point. I want you to hit that point. Um, stuff like that. Josh. I'm listening. You, I just that's fine. Who, who you live with? Um, uh, my mother, my two little cousins, and my dog that you're about to hear about. All right, cool. So let me ask you this question. Did you ever wake up and say, let me go beat the dog? No, I've, I've never woke up in the morning and said, let yeah, me right? go beat okay, the dog. Beat, you need to go beat the dog, right? Or, or, or but I, I'll make it easy, even, even easier for you. Your mom tells you not to do something. Uh-huh. But you feel this urge to do it anyway. And as you're getting ready to go perform this act, something says it's not the right thing to do. You ever got that? Yes. What do you think that something is? So I'll give you a telling me you. what not to do, what to do. I would say I would say that's the Holy Spirit. Well, but then again, I it's still not a voice in my head. If that makes sense. Who, who's telling you not to do that? Or what is telling you not to do that? Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. Um, it, and when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. 
Did God not tell us to obey our parents? He did. So when we disobey them, what is that considered? Sin. So what is the Holy Spirit coming to do? To convict us of that sin. So when you hear something tell you or feel something telling you not to do what your mom told you not to do, that's that voice. And so what I'm trying to get at is if, a, if you're in the street and a stranger says, Josh, you probably won't turn around. It's a 50-50 chance. Mm -hmm. But if you hear your mom 17 blocks away, Josh, because you know that voice, that voice has become familiar. You spend time with that voice. You build a relationship with that voice. All right. Now that voice is something you hear and you're without a doubt, you know that that's that voice. Mm -hmm. You know, that voice won't lead you astray. That voice won't tell you lies. That, vo that voice won't put you in a, in, in a situation that will harm you. You listen to that voice. That voice is familiar with you. You're familiar with that voice. And so as we spend more time in God's word and we spend more time being obedient to him, that voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit will become, become louder we would know for sure that that's in the speaking. And it all is all predicated on our obedience. You hear the voice of God. For whatever reason, you don't know that it's him. That comes familiar with you spending more time. It will become more familiar, spending more time with him. And I'm pretty sure you do. If, if you hear something telling you to go beat the dog, you think that's the spirit telling you to do that? The Holy Spirit? No, not at all. <laughs> oh, not. But if you hear something saying, don't go do what your mom told you not to do, then that's the spirit of God speaking to you. Mm -hmm. I used to say the same thing. I just want God to just come speak to me. So like, I'm just, can, you, can we have a conversation? I talk, you talk, we, talk, we listen, just go back and forth. But it happens. I was sharing with you very early that I had a, I had a, I had a conversation with with the Holy Spirit on Tuesday. And, and I promise you, it was clear as day. The voice was just talking. Just, okay, I hear you. Stop screaming at me now. You just, you got to spend time. That's all. Building that relationship. But first, you got to find out who he is, right? We thought mm -hmm. that this just, it, the Holy Spirit was this phenomenon that, that was only reserved for certain people. And it caused you to jump up and jump down and scream and run up and down the church. If that's the case, is the Holy Spirit only live inside the church because you don't see people running up and jumping down in the middle of the street? Right. So it's like, is the Holy Spirit only in church? No. Holy we got to learn about who the Holy Spirit is. And once we know about this person, oh, I like this person. I'm going to spend some more time getting to know him. And then, you okay, I hear you. Cool. I'll do that. Sure. Whatever you need. Makes sense? Definitely. Um, I, I'm glad that you broke that down. I, it kind of reminded me of, there's a song that I listened to. I'm not sure if you know the guy. His name is Dante Bo. He's a worship leader. Um, and he came out with a song called Voice of God. Um, and the lyrics are really, really cool. But it kind of just talks about all the different ways that we as Christians hear the voice of God. Um, and I, that, it just kind of ties into what you're saying. So while I may not be at that point yet where I have that conversation in a sense, right, or where I'm like, you know, super 100% sure that what I'm hearing, because that's also what I'm trying to grow into, um, trying to differentiate what is my feelings and what is the Holy Spirit. Um, that's something I'm personally trying to get to. Um, but no, it just kind of attests to what you were saying about, you know, how that thing telling us, sorry, not to make it an it, but what is telling us to do right or to do him. wrong? Him. Him is fine. Him is fine. <laughs> let's, let's, change, let's change the verbiage, right? Let's change how we how we address him. Because that yeah. Him. That's <laughs> yeah, that's something that's definitely something I gotta work on too. Cause I'm so like I'd be like the Holy Spirit, okay, so it does this, it does that, but to the way you guys broke it down, that the Holy Spirit has is is a person. He is a person. He has character. He has personality traits. You know, um, inanimate objects don't comfort people. Inanimate objects don't advocate for Jesus. So it, it makes sense. I like the way that you broke it down. So all that to say, thank you. It does make sense. 
he has feelings as well, right? So we can offend him, but that's a conversation for another time. Uh, just to just to, just to piggyback um, a little bit on that, in, in terms of hearing God, um, I, I think of three Ps. First is posture, right? Uh, posture as it relates to um, put it in a way that makes sense. Posture in terms of um, so I would say your posture should be one of dependence, right? Are you dependent on to hear on him? Uh, posture in terms of trust. You trust him um, concerning what you're speaking or asking him to do, or you're waiting for him to, to uh, lead you to do or speak to you. Um, so there's dependence, there's posture, um, trust. I mean, there's more to that not coming to mind, but that, that's the first piece, posture. Um, second thing, I would say is place, right? In order to hear from God, we can't be in a place where we're distracted, right? We, we need to be in a place where, yeah, and, and it's true. I think it's Ezra, I'm not sure, or Josh that said it. It is sometimes that still small voice, right? It ain't going to be him shouting at you. Right? So you got to be in a place where you're not distracted. And not, it doesn't necessarily mean in a crowd of people. You can be by yourself and you're still distracted, right? Um, so a place, a place where there is a dedicated uh, time where you can sit down. Gio always say, um, how, how you always put it when we pray, um, settle yourself, G, how you usually say yeah, it? Yeah, say center yourself. Center yourself, right, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you center yourself so that your focus is solely on God or, or the Holy Spirit. And the third P is prayer, right? Um, you're talking to him. I'm not talking about any big elaborate, but just talking to him. Talking to the Holy Spirit, he's going to respond, right? And then you, you, you hear. So three Ps, posture, place, prayer, right? And think of those three things when you, you, we're talking about hearing from God or hearing from the Holy Spirit, right? Um, it's not going to be some big, audible, crazy shouting at you, right? And as you was alluded to, the spirit will never lead you to do wrong. So now for you guys that are preaching, when it comes to preaching, the Holy Spirit will speak as you seek, right? So you pray, right? You spend time, he'll speak. You study, he'll speak, right? It, it ain't going to be your mind or your wildest imagination, right? When, when you posture yourself, Right, and you're in the right place, right? The Holy Spirit will speak, right? When we're talking about studying Josh and Ezra, you speak through his word, right? So it may not be uh, you're just sitting down on the couch. Oh, he's speaking now. A lot of times it will be as you're studying, right? Now you're speaking, you, you like, oh, it's my actually you speak. I don't know what topic I should speak on. Right? That's one of the hardest things, right? Somebody be like, yeah, just come because the Holy Spirit leads you. Damn. You don't got to talk. Now I got to do all the work, right? You don't got to focus scripture. Nah, just do as the Holy Spirit. Damn. Right? So now all the work is on you, right? Your, your prayers, Holy Spirit. God, what would you have for me to say to these people? Because ultimately, this word isn't coming from you. You're, you're just a messenger or the vehicle in which the Holy Spirit will use to impart the word to the people. Right. So your prayer is, Holy Spirit, what would you have for me to say? Right. What is it that you want me to say? Um, I love when I pray in terms of pre preaching. Uh, my prayer is, uh, God, I decrease and you increase until there is all of you and absolutely none of me. Right. That, that every time I, I, I have to preach that that's my prayer. Right. Because this word is not coming from Jehovah. It's coming from God. Right. So ask him. Right. And then. He'll begin to speak. And as, as, as young preachers, and I'm still young, right? But I, anytime, I, and I read this a long time ago, anytime you get a thought or an idea for a sermon or a vision for it, write it down. I tell Gio this all the time, right? Because it doesn't happen happenstance, not just because. A lot of the stuff that I wrote down two months ago or a month ago, a week ago, end up being what God would have for me to speak on come that following Sunday or that next month. Right? So when you get in thoughts and ideas and sermon ideas, not just because 
oh, happenstance, the Holy Spirit is speaking. He's inspiring, right? That's another function of the Holy Spirit. He inspires you, right? Write it down, right? You get to that point, um, you don't know what you want to pray on, go back to your notes and pray. I'm not saying pick, choose. Now, now you still got to pray. Holy Spirit, which one of these topics would you have me to speak on? Or perhaps it's none of those things that you've written down. But because you're in the right place and you have the right posture, right? Meaning you're trusting him to give you the word, even if he don't give it to you till the night before, right? That's why this trust comes in. You got to trust him, right? You got to trust him. You got to depend on him. Right? You can't take it into your own, own hands. I don't want to make this answer long winded but um, it, it, it takes practice. And a lot of that is the relationship that you build. Right? You hear the voice more, the more time you spend with him. Right? So I hope, I hope that makes sense. There's so much more um, that I can say, but I don't want to be so long winded that you know, I start chatting. Um, but posture, place, prayer. Talk to him. He's going to talk back, right? But when you pray, and this is so important, whenever we pray, we have to be able to be still enough so that we can hear, right? We can't be in a place of free of distraction to speak to him and not be in a place free of distraction to hear from him, right? It goes hand in hand, right? So we have to be able to center ourselves and be in a place where we can hear from him, right? And he, he's always... I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is always speaking. It's always speaking. Right? Will you hear? Right? Another thing, as, as preachers, right, I always anoint my ears. My prayer is, Holy Spirit, help my ears to stay attuned to your voice. Right? Because there's other voices. Right? There's your voice internally. There's the voice of other people. There's the devil. And then there's God. There's the Holy Spirit. Right? So, Holy Spirit, help my, my ears. Right? If you have olive oil, get, get some oil, anoint your ears regularly right? so that your, your ears are, are tuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Right? Because even in your sermon preparation sometimes, the devil will speak. You've got to be able to discern that. Right? And that's another thing, the, the spirit of discernment. You've got to be able to discern that. Right? What, what, what I mean, uh, sometimes you, you're preaching somebody did you wrong. You're like, nah, that's, I'm going to put this in my sermon, right? And you end up going up cussing people thinking God led you to speak on that when he did it, right? You're up there revealing something that you were hurt by and God did not give you that word, right? So you've got to be able to discern that word that's coming from God. Did, did God say that, right? right? Posture, place, prayer. For now. Ladies and gentlemen, now, <laughs> if you felt led by that word, please join us at the altar. If you want to give your life to the Lord? Now is the time. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. If, if you receive that word, I want you to say this prayer with me, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. God. Lord God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I heard you speak to me. I heard you speak to I me. Heard you speak to I receive all that you have said. I receive, receive all, all that you I believe said. you as to be my savior. I, I believe, believe you, you as you to be my savior. Have your way in me. Have, Have your, your way, way in me, God. In, me. Oh, in Jesus' Jesus. name we pray. In Jesus', Jesus name. name. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Hey, hey, come hey, on. Hey, like, I'm, I'm, I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm closing. No, continue. Continue. I'm closing. Uh, can I tell y'all, as I sat here and Gia was talking, the Holy Spirit spoke that to me. Right? It wasn't stuff I knew because I'm smart. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing about the Holy Spirit. It's, it's not about your degrees and how much you know. He will tell you stuff that you didn't know a minute ago. And he will reveal that to you. He'll speak that. And that, oh my God. When you when you are really getting to, in tune with the Holy Spirit, right? He'll just start speaking to you. Like, wow, that's amazing. I never thought about it like that. And that's legit how it is, right? I've, I've heard posture before. And I, I speak a lot about posture. I've preached on posture, right? But legit, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to G. I'm listening to you guys. I'm like, 
I know I have to answer Josh because I didn't get to back, get back to you throughout the week. And I'm like, the Holy Spirit, he was like, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to call you after. Was, me and the Holy Spirit are talking. I'm like, I'm going to call you after. I was like, nah. The Holy Spirit was like, just tell him now. He's on Zoom. It may benefit the other guy, right? And he literally just gave it to me. Posture. Prayer. That's confirmation. Because when you said, I'm going to call you, was talking about, like, I didn't know. But then in my mind, I said, while we're speaking, I'm like, we could just talk about the question right now about hearing the Holy Spirit. It, it leaves you in awe. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not your ability. It's your availability. Repeat that, Jill. Repeat that, Jill. Repeat that. Yeah, that, 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 that you mind. I borrowed that from somebody. Hold on, that might be the next message. Nah, yeah, there you go. That's not that. No, that's what I said. Repeat that. Repeat that. Yeah, it's not your ability. Like it's not like Jason. I'm not the smart one doing all this. Like, it's not your ability. It's your availability. Are you anointing your ears so that he, you can hear him? You want to hear him so you can do what he wants you to do. Gosh, I got three sermons so far from this conversation. How much you got? <laughs> I got a, I got a couple points, bro. I got, I got, got a couple, couple things I'm trying to do. Listen, bro, Javay said to jot him down, bro. He said, no, you're down. right. So listen, he, we just... Yeah, he's always getting on me about that. <laughs> I tell that all the time. Because I read this book several years ago. And it's mm -hmm. funny. A, a, a gentleman... Uh, passed in my church a couple of weeks ago. His funeral was yesterday. And as I'm thinking about the book, he's the one that gave me the book. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Um, and I said, as a young preacher, thoughts are going to come to your mind. God, write it down. Get a book, phone, whatever. Write it down. Right? Holy Spirit is always speaking. And as you anoint your ears, anoint your lips as well. Right? That you may speak as thus saith the Lord. It's so important that when we stand before God's people, we're speaking, thus saith the Lord, man. This word came from God. Mm -hmm. right? It ain't come from the internet. Right? It ain't come from another preacher. But it came from God, right? And let me tell you, when I first started out um, preaching, no, nobody really sat me down and, and told me how to preach, per se. Like, how, how do I craft a sermon? How do I... Uh, 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 how do I exegete a scripture? How, how do I study? But nobody really sat me down. I kind of just figured it out on my own. People give me, you know, my, I have mentors, right? They, you know, this, you have a beginning body and you have an end, a conclusion, right? But nobody really sat me down. So when I first started preaching, right, I would get a topic, all right, and I pray and I get confirmation and then I go to YouTube. And so I, I will watch like, T.D. Jakes or Noel Jones, and if their sermon topic is relating to my topic, oh, that sounds good. I'm going to write that down. Legit. I'm being honest, right? It sounds good. And I, and I would have preached the entire sermon, but if something sounded really good to me, oh, in my head as a young preacher, I'm like, yo, this going to get my church jumping, right? So I'm going to put it in my sermon, right? Right. But it, and you grow and you evolve and you learn, right? Um. And I did that for a while. And I don't, it, I don't think God, there's nothing, nothing necessarily wrong in it. I didn't quote them all the time. I can tell you that. Right? I didn't give them credit for what they said all the time. Right? But as, you, as I grew, I learned my sermons started coming straight from my time and spending with the Holy Spirit. I, I didn't need to watch Uncle J if, if I'm speaking on hope, I don't need to go to YouTube and watch Uncle Jake speak on hope. Right? So I get inspiration. Right? I, I don't have to do that no more because... I promise you, I sit, sometimes I kneel and I write my, I, like I kneel down and I write my sermon, right? Or I sit down and I, I start writing. Holy Spirit, speak to me, right? And it comes from your time of studying as well, right? So if I, if I get a topic, let's say the topic is hope, I go online and I'm going to research hope, right? I may look at um, the Greek translation, what that means, where it was derived from. I may go online and look at um breaking hope down, components of hope, right? And I, and I research that. I look at hope um, psychologically. I look at hope biblically, right? And then I begin to craft my sermon. So I'll have subheadings um, and, and, and the whole thing will come together as, as I sit here because I, I, I write out my sermons, not 
I write my sermons fully in a sense, but when I preach it, I don't necessarily read fully from my, my paper, right? But I, my goal is to get to the point where I can get up there with some bullet points and just go, right? And whatever, that, that's, that's the goal, right? Um, but as I'm sitting here, I'm writing my sermon, it's Holy Spirit just speaking, I'm talking, I'm flowing. But what does that come from? My time of studying and preparation, right? If I sat down and, and, and I wrote on my topic, on my paper, hope, and I did no studying, then I'd be staring at that black page. I'll probably go back to YouTube. I don't, got to, I don't know what to say, right? So you see how the Holy Spirit works? You got to give him something to work with, right? And I don't know if you ever heard that, that phraseology before, right? But you got to give the Holy Spirit something to work with. So your time spent studying the word. And when you study the word, right, you re I, I recommend getting a study Bible, right? Read it. And when you study it, I, I love NLT because it makes it plain. But when I study and I preach, I have both NLT, I have the message version sometimes, and I have a King James, right? Because you got to go back to the original context that was written in, right? Because sometimes as they're translated to these different uh, translations, some of, some scriptures or some words are omitted and the scripture doesn't carry the full weight of its meaning, right? So we, we lose some of it. So King James always have that with you, right? But it's okay to reference other, um, other, uh, other, other translations, right? When I talk about scripture and I'm studying, I, I read commentaries of the scripture, right? Um, to get a, a better understanding of it, right? I want, when, you, when you read in scripture, and you, you're preaching, I know I'm going on right now. We're supposed to have been end, but the, the Holy Spirit is flowing, right? You, 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 um, when you read in scripture, sometimes you have to go back to the chapter before or a couple of chapters before to get proper understanding of what this, the story a lot sometimes in the Old Testament, right? In the New Testament as well, but definitely in the Old Testament, right? Because it, it's, it, the story started, maybe if it's 1 Samuel or 2 Samuel you're preaching from, the story probably started in 1 Samuel. Samuel. You got to go back, right? And if there's a word that you don't know, look it up. Get the full understanding of the scripture, right? Don't just focus on the content, right? But look at the scripture in the context, that it's written in, right? Um, yeah, all right? So it, all of this comes and talk about hearing from God and you writing your sermon, Josh and Ezra, because you spent time with him, right? If I'm preaching, uh, let's say I'm preaching tomorrow, I don't really start writing my sermon till like Friday, Saturday, right? Because Monday through Thursday, I'm focused on researching, studying, um, exegesing the scripture, or just spending time with God, right? Every, make sure you fast as well, right? Anytime you're preaching, right? You fast, you set some time aside, but you're, you're focusing on God so you can hear, you're prepared, you're consecrating yourself so that you're preparing yourself for God to use you, right? So again, most of the week is spent on preparation. The writing stuff come, come later. And that stuff comes easier once you do the work up front, the studying and the preparing. You can't get up and talk to God people without spending time with God, right? And it's evident, right? People can tell when you don't spend time with God and you just come up there with any word, any old word, right? I want you to know too, not every sermon it's going to be deep and, and it, with Greek translation, right? And these different subheadings. Sometimes the Holy Spirit wants you to keep it simple. And you have to be careful that we don't uh, attain so much education and so much knowledge that when we convey the word to the people, it makes no sense to them, right? Sometimes I listen to preachers. And trust me, when we get up there, we want to sound educated. No, you, you want to. You, you want to sound like you know what you're talking about, right? You don't want to go up there and sound like you're, you're talking anything crazy. And as you study and you grow more, your, your preaching will mature. Your words and your language will mature. That's fine. 
nothing wrong with that. But you don't want to you want to convey the word in such a way that everyone on every level can understand that it's not going to fly over their head. Right. I, a lot of time I listen to some preachers and it. Like, what does that word even mean? Right. And they spend no time dissecting the word. Right. And if you don't dissect the meaning of the word, how do you expect people to walk away with understanding? Another thing. Right. You read your scripture in the beginning and you never reference it again. It makes no sense to me. Because if you're preaching from a particular scripture, then I'm expecting you to teach me in light of that scripture, right? So don't start with the scripture and then quote 15 other, I don't care how much scripture you know, right? Don't quote 15 other scriptures and never get back to the foundation or the basis of the scripture that your sermon is built on in which we should derive understanding, right? So you gotta go back to your scripture and please don't, whole bunch of scriptures that have nothing to do with the original scripture. Because all you're doing is confusing people. All right? So there's there times you're going to have sermons with subheadings and all these different components. And sometimes your sermon is going to be straightforward and simple. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? But just make sure you deliver the word in a way that everyone can understand and that you're always pointing people back to Jesus. I'm done. Oh, what a word. No, what a uh, word. Jill, Jill, hold on, hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. This is the perfect example of letting the Holy Ghost use you. The perfect example. I just wanted to say that. So far, I got three sermons from what you just said. And thank you so much for that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna use these. Uh, I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut this part out, and I'm gonna personally email it to you. Um, don't worry about it. I'm gonna send it to you. Go, Gio. Now it's gonna be a clown. Be like, well, if you felt led by what was said, well, come on and join us at the Brethren Church of God of <laughs> Great Faith of Mount Zion, <laughs> of Episcopalian Baptist Pentecostal Apostolic Apostolic Church of God. <laughs> You know, if this if this word was a blessing to you, come on down and sow a seed into the mouth. Sow a seed, brother. Sow a seed. Hold on, that, that's the favorite part. Mind. That wasn't even in my notes. <laughs> oh, that wasn't even in my notes. I didn't even rehearse that. I even prepared this. That was all the Holy Spirit, bro. Like that was oh, that, that wasn't was even fair. me, man. That wasn't even me, bro. Oh my gosh, I, man. I know, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I, I'm done. I'm, I promise. I'm, I'm done. You, I'm gonna... closing. My last closing, right? Uh huh. <laughs> let go. Let go. Let go. Go please. ahead. I'm alarmed. If you prepare a word, and the Holy Spirit switches it right before you preach, like right before you walk up there, like don't don't be alarmed. This is this is why I note my ears, right? Because they mm -hmm. they have to stay attuned to the Holy Spirit, right? Prime example. Maybe last year I went up there prepare or two years ago went up there with a prepared word. The, the, my choir sang before I preached, right? Holy Spirit was moving, started moving. Switched my entire sermon right there. I preached from a different scripture, a scripture I didn't read in a really long time. And my, my sermon had meat in it, right? It wasn't a topic I studied, but it, it had meat. So again, posture, trust, dependence, right? You, you, basic, you, you need that when it comes uh, as it relates to the Holy Spirit, trust dependence, right? And, and the Holy Spirit will, will use you in ways that will absolutely blow your mind. I'm done. I'm done. I just, I just have to get that out there. Don't be surprised if Holy Spirit switch up on you. This is why you have to stay attuned um, in, in terms of listening. And even while you're speaking, gotta stay attuned. And that, that's hard, right? Because you're preaching the word, but you're still trying to listen to what he, don't worry, he, he'll, he'll, he'll shift you, right? You'll, you'll feel it, you'll sense it, right? And that comes as you grow in relationship with him and you learn to, to understand and discern his voice more. And don't be surprised, sometimes you're not meant to finish your entire sermon. The Holy Spirit start moving, listen, maybe he wants you to stop. You may have written five pages or whatever it is, but he only wants you to do four, right? He switched it up. He, he, Holy Spirit switch things up sometimes, and that, that's totally okay, right? So be, be cognizant of that and recognize um, that the Holy Spirit can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, right? I'm going to take these off. I'm going to log off. <laughs>
Oh, ah. man. What a word. What a word. For example, uh, Josh, uh, the editing software that I'm using right now, uh, I had the free version where they had the watermark, and I think in the first, battle, not in the first, uh, you retrieve video, you saw it in that video. Mm-hmm. Guess who, guess who, guess who cashed out me forty dollars so I could get the paid version so we could remove that. Uh, should I actually guess? That was Javi. Nice man. I I even asked I didn't even ask him because I had my money I was gonna do it, but he saw the seed in me. He saw how. Tell them what you saw, Javi. I can't speak on that for you. Tell, tell them what you saw. What what made you what made you cash out me that forty dollars? Sorry, I was in my head. Um... The Holy Spirit's still That's moving in your brain, bro. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, honestly, bro. I, I would yeah, I'd feel his presence right where I'm at, man. Um I I I can't remember vividly. I remember cash apping it to you, right? But I don't want to misspeak and say it was spirit led, right? But I respect what you're doing. I love what you're doing, right? And we gotta be able to pour into each other, right? However, the Lord has blessed me, and that can be a blessing to you. I, I don't awesome. remember if it was, you know, just the Spirit told me to do. I don't want to misspeak, right? A lot of people say that, yeah, the Holy Spirit said, or the God told me to tell you, right? Whatever, that's another topic. Um, but no, I, I, I respect what you're doing, and however I can help, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, man. So mm-hmm. keep, keep going. Um, I support you, you know, Jay and I support you, and support you both. You know, however we can help you guys. Um, people poured into me, and I want to pour into others, right? Um, Maurice and Kevin, they, they poured into me. I'm pouring into y'all, and it, it keeps going. Y'all are going to, you know, find someone that y'all can pour into, um, and it, it just keeps going. Well, Brother Minister, Bishop, Apostle, um, thank you Serve, for that servant. Ser- servant of the most high God. Thank you. Thank you for that, for that word, sir. Um, it's, it's, did what I say answer your question? It did. It did. Definitely. It answered that question. And then, another question. And, the, and, and a then some question. All I with, uh, question. Cool. You had, you, you, you had Jill over here eating popcorn, listening to the word. <laughs> My boy yeah, put a movie just now. <laughs> to get the pop. Like, that was bro, he got the organic too. He got the organic. This is organic. Two more days. Yo, this man bougie. <laughs> I say the last day. Yo, this this is the best supermarket go to when you're fasting, bro. They got everything you need. Everything, Wait, so- no sugar. Everything mad plain. Tastes like tastes like napkin. Just everything. T- <laughs> Oh man, but no, nah, for real, Javen. Thank you, thank you so much, man. Honestly, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, I, I like to thank all of y'all. Love. Have your autograph for me. Will you get famous? Definitely, Pastor Deacon. Right. Bishop, Bishop Greenaway in our training told me not to chase a celebrity status. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so here, here's how I close. Or he, he coming with another all, all glory to God. Oh, uh, glory yeah. goes to God. All ah. the glory. We, 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 maybe we need to do a, a Zoom on preaching so we can talk about this, right? Because last week, the Holy Spirit just keep telling me stuff. Just remember, don't take credit for anything you do. Right? It ain't you. It ain't you, mm-hmm. boo boo. Right? <laughs> all right? Not you. Ezra, do your closing, man, because. Yeah. <laughs> Rock it up, bro. Hey, hey, hey. Keep talking, man. That's it. We're going to be on here. I'm, Bird, I'm running out of popcorn. We got to close. Nicole. Hi. Thank you. Thank you to Brother Gio, Brother Javi, and Brother Josh for coming in to the Bible study today to be able to sh- sharpen iron, iron, sharpen iron. We're able to pour into each other, give each other amazing thought, let the spirit work in us each and every single day. And I thank you guys just so much for coming back. We're going to go into the closing prayer. Um, we're going to let Brother Jill end off with the closing period, and we're going to do the outro. As always, center yourself, quiet your mind, deep breath in, slowly exhale out. Father, it is 
impossible to put words together to describe how great you are, how grateful we are of you, how merciful and gracious you are to us, your patience, your love, your kindness, meek, holy, righteous, all of these things you are. And with such great power, you still consider us your creation. We thank you that you invite us day in and day out to sup with you, to sit at your table and to feast with you. I thank you for my brothers that have taken you up on your offer to come into your court and into your gates, to sit at your feet and dwell in your presence. All that you have given us today through your Holy Spirit, we say thank you. But my prayer, O oh Lord, is that we would not depart from what you have revealed unto us, but that the seed was so deep and take root on the inside of us and that fruit would come forth from this session. That the four of us will be built up, that our spirit man will be strengthened and that our faith in you, O oh Lord, will be elevated. Lord, lead us deep, 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 deep into the waters where we are fully submerged and where we can lose what we think is control and give it all unto you for you to have your way. As my brother alluded earlier, we want to anoint our ears to hear what you have to say. Anoint our lips to speak with thus saith the Lord. Anoint our hands to serve where you may lead us and anoint our feet, Father God, as you guide our footsteps. We pray even now for the hearers of this sermon, the hearers of this session, we thank you for all that you are pouring out into our brother Gervais. Have your divine way. Let hearts be changed. Let minds be transformed. May we be new because of this session. We look forward with great expectation of what's to come. May we never be afraid or ashamed to share our testimony because of this session. We glorify you. We thank you. Holy Spirit, remind us to take you with us today as we transition from moment by moment. Help us to come with you as you work inside of us. Speak that we may hear. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, thank you guys for an amazing session. This is the first two hours of Bible study out of all of the episodes. Thank you guys so much for your thoughts, your opinion, letting the Holy Spirit use you. Again, this is the end of the video, guys. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new, turn on your post notifications. That way, anytime I upload YouTube, we'll send you a notification. Coming from Gio, Jarve, Josh, and myself, this is Motivation for Young Christian. Bye, guys. Bye.